have the resistance of a, a what I can call a cylindrical resistor and a spherical resistor. Because usually when we introduce the concept of resistor, we say uh, you have some kind of generic wire and you set up a voltage here and the resistance of the wire is the resistivity times the length over the area. So in other words, the current is flowing from one end of the wire this way to that wire, like that. And uh, in the, my notes, you could even see I've done cases where what, it, what happens if the uh, diameter of the wire is increasing or if the diameter of the wire is decreasing. Okay, So I've done cases like that. What happens when the surface area is increasing or decreasing? And I've proven and I've done the equations for that. Now, what I would like to consider is different kind of resistor. What if we have something like this? We have a wire. Okay, and we connect the negative of the battery to that wire, uh, let's say, or we can connect the positive of the battery to that wire. Then we have another wire, okay, and then we connect the negative of the battery to that wire. This time the current is going to flow cylindrically outward from the inner wire, so it's going to go flow this way. Okay, so instead of flowing from one end to the other end, the potential difference is from one cylinder to the other cylinder. This is kind of akin to my lectures on cylindrical capacitors and spherical capacitors, okay? How would we derive the resistance of that? Well, our starting point is still this. Resistance is rho L over A, except length, my length is gonna be along the path this way as I'm going from one cylinder to the other uh, cylinder, so my length is, I can call it dr. What is my area? My area is always the perpendicular cross-sectional area. So in the case of a regular wire, what was my area? If the current was flowing this way, the, this, was the length, uh, this was the length L, right? And then this was my area. If it was a variable length, right, if the length was changing, how did I do it? I did an area like this, and then I did a length like that. So my length was dx, and my area was this one. The, so the current is flowing this way. So the, the area was always the perpendicular cross-section to the area. Uh, the current is flowing this way here. And then the area was this one, and then the length was along this way. So in this case, if the length is flowing cylindrically outward, what is going to be my area? My area is going to be the area that is uh, perpendicular this way. See, the current is flowing this way. Everywhere. So imagine as if, imagine uh, as if the, if we draw the wire like this, the current is flowing this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, and so what would be the perpendicular area to that? The area, the perpendicular area, will be the area of the cylinder, the, the area of the cylinder itself, right? Which is perpendicular to the flow of the. Um, the current. So in that case, the area is 2 pi r, 2 pi r, which is the, the r is here, times L, 2 pi r times L. As the, the current is flowing, going out, the area is increasing. The area is increasing because you have more cylinder coming in the way. So you're going to have here rho dl is going to be dr, a is going to be 2 pi r l. And then the resistance of the wire, this is dr. So the resistance of the wire is going to be the integral of this from the inner wire, r1, to the outer wire, r2. So 2 pi L, r is equal to rho over 2 pi L, ln of r2 over r1. So the resistance of what we call a cylindrical wire here flowing outward is rho over 2 pi L, ln over r2 over r1. Uh, the bigger the difference between the two uh, radii, 
the bigger the resistance is, the further the wires are. You can kind of compare this to the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor here. The capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor was 2 pi L E0 kappa over Ln R2 over R1. So you had the dielectric constant of the capacitor, which is kind of like a rho, E0, the electrical permittivity, 2 pi. Here, the 2 pi is on the bottom. And then you had L, the L is on the bottom, and then you had ln R2 R1, and then here we have ln R2 over R1 on the top. So resistor acts opposite to how the capacitor acts. Okay, how about a spherical uh, capacitor? Okay, so the spherical resistor is gonna act like the spherical capacitor, right? So you're gonna have, imagine a sphere, a bowl like this, you connect the negative, the positive of the battery to here, negative of the battery outside. And of course, I'm assuming here the material in the between is some kind of conducting material with certain resistivity. Copper, whatever it could be. So current is flowing this way. This time it's flowing spherically. So you have dr. Rho uh, dL over A. dL is going to be dr. The area A is going to be the area perpendicular to that flow, current flow, which is 4 pi r squared. Then integrate, integrate. So you're going to have uh, rho over 4 pi r1 to r2. So the integral of this is negative 1 over r, r1 to r2. It's going to equal rho over 4 pi. Then you're going to get uh, 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. Therefore, it's going to equal rho over 4 pi, r2 minus r1 over r1, r2. Of course, the bigger the difference between the r1 and r2, the bigger the resistance is again, okay? Now compare that to our capacitance of a spherical capacitor, which one was C equals four pi E zero R one R two kappa over R two minus R one. Again, it acts opposite to the capacitor. R two minus R one, R one, R two, four pi zero kappa. So if you have any other detailed questions, you can look at the lecture of the capacitor one, compare the two, you will always see that the resistor acts opposite to the capacitor in its behavior. But this is showing you the derivation of a cylindrical and spherical resistor. Thank you very much.